your Bibles, John chapter number 10. This chapter deals with the shepherd and the sheep. We'll see in verse number 11 that Jesus is the good shepherd. Uh, the Bible also reveals he's the great shepherd. It also reveals he's the chief shepherd. And I like what David said, he's my shepherd. Let's begin our reading verse number 7. The Bible says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for being new in Christ. I'm glad your mercies are renewed every day. Lord, I'm glad uh, my past has been washed in the blood of Jesus, and I have today to worship you and serve you. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the cross where you did give your life for the sheep. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for folks that, Lord, uh, miss being in the house of God and come hungry looking for something from heaven. And God, uh, I'm just a vessel. There's nothing I can do to satisfy somebody's hunger, but you can satisfy everybody's hunger. And I pray you'd walk through here, Lord, and you'd help us. Uh, you'd let us sit in heavenly places and feast from thine table. God, I pray you would uh, satisfy our soul with fatness from God. Uh, God, I pray you'd do great things. Thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies, the good fellowship of thy people, good Sunday school hour, good report of good jail services. Uh, thank you, Lord, for being a good God. We bless you and praise you. Now use this unworthy vessel. Get glory to your glorious name. We'll thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we do pray. Uh, amen. Uh, Amen. We find in these verses a few things. I want you to notice, first of all, the opening. Verse number 7, the Bible again says, Then said Jesus unto them, again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, he went on to say that if God opens a door, nobody can close it. If God closes a door, nobody can open it. Uh, I'm glad there is an opening. Uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, mercy built a bridge to glory. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, uh, God made a way that old Gentile dogs like you and I could be saved. Uh, I'm glad there was an opening one day. Uh, I'm glad when they pierced his side, they didn't realize what they were doing. Uh, uh, but God opened up a fountain uh, and made a way where sinners could be plunged in that fountain uh, and freed from their sins, uh, freed from bondage. Uh, I'm glad he made a Way, uh, uh, where we can go to glory. Uh, I'm glad he said I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself uh, where I am there you may be also. Uh, I'm glad he made a way. Uh, he is the way, the truth and the life. Uh, bless his holy name. He made an opening for you and I. Uh, you have to understand uh, under the Old Testament economy there was no hope for us. Israel's the true vine, but God grafted in a branch and made a way and opened. When he opened his arms, he opened the door to heaven and you and I could go through. What a blessing. We see the opening. We see the opportunity. Look in verse number 9. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. I'm glad there's an opportunity. Not only was the door open, he said, if any man. That includes you or me whosoever will. He made a way. I'm glad he didn't say a, a religious man. I'm glad he didn't say a rich man. I'm glad he didn't say a, a, a Hebrew man. I'm glad he didn't say uh, 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 some other kind. He just said any man. Uh, 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 I qualify. I was just any man. Uh, I, I'm glad there was an opportunity uh, for even me and even you. Uh, he made a way uh, that we could be saved. Uh, now listen, uh, uh, God didn't choose who would be and who wouldn't be, but he said whosoever will may come. Uh, and I'm glad that he made a way uh, and he gave us a desire to seek after him. Uh, hey, I was lost in sin, didn't know existed. 
missed it, but he came my way uh, and began working in my heart uh, and let me know he'd save me. Uh, and then I had a desire to be saved. Hallelujah. And he made a way I could go through that door. Uh, I'm glad for the opportunity. You know, there are people in this world who's never even heard his name, but they still have an opportunity to get saved when they hear the gospel. I'm glad he made a way. I'm glad he'll make a way. I believe in the deepest, dark, darkest region of somewhere there's never been the gospel preached. If in their heart they get to looking around at all God created and they desire to know who he is, he'll make a way for them to know him. I'm glad for the opportunity, the opening, the opportunity. And then in verse number 10 we find the opposition. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now in verse 8 he said, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Can I say, there's always been a crowd in opposition to the things of God. In verse number 10 he speaks of a thief in particular. Can I say the sorry no good devil desires for people to die and go to hell. Can I say he seeks to steal and to kill and to destroy. You know, in the parable of the sower, uh, uh, some of the seeds fell on good ground, some stony ground, some thorny ground, but it said the fowls of the air came to scarf up the seed. Uh, 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 that's what he does. Uh, he wants to steal the seed of the Word of God from rooting in our hearts and making a difference in our lives. Uh, I pray every Sunday for those that are teaching those children on the other side on Sunday nights when their hearts are impressionable and when they're young uh, 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 the seed of God's being taught to them that it'll take, take root in their heart when they reach the age of accountability they'll get saved at a young age uh, but make no mistake that sorry devil's trying to steal the seed Amen. he wants to steal your joy because the joy of the Lord's your strength he wants to kill your testimony he wants to kill everything around you uh, every time you get to Get a little God on you. He wants to kill that off of you. Uh, he wants to just rob you of everything and destroy you of everything. He wants to destroy your life. I'm glad that this verse goes on, this chapter goes on to say that I'm in his hand, his hand's in the Father's hand, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. I'm glad the devil can't get to me unless God lets him. And in order to get to me, he's got to go through God's hand. Hmm? I'm glad he can huff and he can butt puff but he can't blow the house down mm? Amen. but make no mistake we have opposition yes, sir. Mm. every day he's got you in his bullseyes and only by the grace of God the arrows don't penetrate you mm? Mm. he is a sorry devil I hate the devil Amen. I'm glad there's coming a day he's going to be thrown in the lake of fire aren't you yes, mm? uh, but I'm interested in the second part of verse number 10 today the Bible says, Jesus says in particular, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now a lot of times when this verse is quoted or referred to, we'll say that Jesus come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We say amen. But we don't pay attention to what this verse is saying. He's saying that I am come that they might have life. And then there's some punctuation. There's a comma. That means to pause. And then he says, and that they might have it more abundantly. We lump it all together. Might have life, have it more abundantly. We'll say, boy, you, you can have an abundant life. But if you read it in its context, he says, I'm come that they might have life. And I say, when you got born again, you were made alive. You were dead in trespasses and sins. When you repented and trusted Christ, the Spirit of God quickened you, made you alive. He took up His abode in your life, and you became a benefit to God because you belong to Him now. Amen. Now, let me just say this. This might hair lip the devil, make somebody mad, but I don't really care. The moment you got saved, you got a all of God that you're going to ever get. You do not have to go through some penance and some period uh, of uh, growth in order to get more God. You got saved, you got Him all. 
You were sealed by the Holy Spirit promise. And when the Bible says be ye filled with the Spirit, he's not saying you don't have him. He's just saying let him have you. That'll sink in on some of you. Be filled with the Spirit. Just be. Just be all God wants you to be. Don't sit around hoping for some more. You've got all you need. Just be. Be saved. Be a Christian. Huh? We don't question when he says be kind, Brother Bob. Just be kind. Be filled. Just be. Just be all that God wants you to be. Hmm? But can I say, when you got saved, you got life. When you repented, you got life. God imparted unto you eternal life. You're never going to die. You're going to lay this body down. It's going to go to sleep. But the moment you do, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, you just wake up in glory. You're never going to die. You have eternal life. And then there's a comma. And it says, and that they might have it more abundantly. After we see there's life, there's the word might. That means you can or cannot have abundant life. The difference after that comma is a choice. Brother Clint, you can be saved, sit down on God, never do nothing to God, that's your choice. I personally think when you do that, you're miserable. God didn't save you to sit down. He saved you to serve. And it has something we all can do. But, Brother James, if you want abundant life, it's available. You've got to choose to have it. That they might have it more abundantly. You can choose to have an abundant life. Do you ever see some people saved and they look miserable? Oh. Uh, I mean, it, 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 they look like the mother-in-law just didn't come to visit. The mother-in-law moved in and started barking orders. I mean, they're miserable. Huh? Have you ever seen some, they just look like they've been eating prunes all week. I mean, they're just nasty. Anybody seen that one chocolate commercial where it's got playing this opera music, and at the end they got this woman that's got more wrinkles than any of them Sharpe dogs I've ever seen in my life. She's got wrinkles on top of her ankles, and she's eating that thing, and her face looks like, you know, something that's cracked. I mean, it's bad. I'm thinking, if I'm selling chocolate, that woman's not going to be on my commercial because it grosses me out. Uh, I understand getting old and getting wrinkled. I'm getting a bunch of them, okay? But I don't want to see them. That's why I don't hold a mirror up. Are you listening? That's a mess. I'm thinking, that doesn't look like happy chocolate face. Huh? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, sir, some people don't look like happy saved face. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want that face representing Emmanuel Baptist Church, let alone the Lord. Are you listening? Uh, and what it tells me, uh, they don't have an abundant life. Uh, 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 their life is based on condition and circumstance, and they're miserable. Uh, uh, friend, if all you got uh, is salvation in your soul, and then your outlook is this world, you're going to be, of all men, most miserable. Well, you have no hope. Yeah. There are a lot of people who choose to live that way. Amen. There are a lot of people who choose to live a yo-yo Christian life. When the bills are paid and the kids aren't sick, they're up here. Problems come, they're down here. And it's up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, and they got crack face. They don't have happy face. And they choose to live that way. Why would you want to choose to live that way? Listen, after I turned 40, roller coasters started doing something to me. At 50, I don't even watch them go up and down, let alone get on one. Are you listening? Uh, there's just something it does to me. Uh, why would a Christian want to live a yo-yo life? Why would you want to be up and down and in and out? and uh, uh, uh? Jesus is better than that. He not only can save you, he can satisfy you. And he can do something in your soul that floods you that when everybody is around you, they see you're infectious. They want what you got. Because you, what you have is abundant. It's not normal. It's something that other people should desire to have. With all that in mind, I want to preach on the, uh, the more abundant life. Hmm? Hmm? To have a more abundant life, you have to choose to propel beyond the satisfaction of a mere life. Hmm? Just being saved. 
I'm glad you're saved if you're saved. Man, there's a whole lot more to it than that. Jesus is better than that. Amen. Huh? He's so good and so rich and so wonderful. And you can live a more abundant life. Amen. But your choice is yours. I got to thinking about one living abundantly. Can I say one who has an abundant life recognizes the source? Amen. We find in verse number 10 again, Jesus says, I am come. By the way, he is the I am. Whatever you need, you just plug his name in there. I am that I am. Hmm? I am come uh, that they might uh, have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Uh, uh, the source of the abundant life uh, is him, Jesus. Uh, he's the source. The problem with a lot of folks, uh, as we seek his hand and not his face, uh, you need to seek him. Uh, when you seek him, he's the source. Uh, you'll never have an abundant life without him. Yes, he's the source to save you, uh, but he's also the source of a more abundant life. Uh, thanks be unto God he went to Calvary. Uh, thanks be unto God he pardoned me from my sins. Uh, thanks be unto God he robed me in his righteousness. Uh, but there's more to it than that. Uh, that's just the starting point. Uh, he's able to be the source of the abundant life if you want it. Uh, can I say this? He's the source of the pardon. Uh, he's the source of my provisions. Uh, everything I have, everything I aspire to have came from him. Uh, he's the source of my protection. Uh, I'm not worried about the, uh, the Marines and the Army. Thank God for them. Uh, uh, but Jesus is far greater than them. Uh, he's been taking good care of me. Uh, he's the source of my peace. Uh, hey, uh, uh, all this world has to offer, uh, it can't give you peace. Uh, the Bible says, for he is a... Our peace. Uh, he's the source of our peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Uh, how can I say he's the source of our praise? Uh, uh, we ought to praise him. Uh, we ought to worship him uh, uh, because he is worthy of it all. He's the source. Uh, can I say those that live abundantly, they can lose their bank account. They can lose their health. They can lose a, a loved one. They can lose anything that this life has to, uh, to offer that is dear to them. And they still live abundantly because their source isn't their bank account. Their source isn't what they drive. Their source isn't a loved one. Their source isn't uh, anything that this world has to offer. Their source is Him. Mm, an old adage says the cream always rises to the, to the top. Uh, I've seen some folks go through great peril, but you just see Jesus all over them. You know why? Because the peril isn't their source. I've also seen people lose a job and they won't come to church for six months. I guarantee you there's some people, they take a hit in their, in their bank account, and you won't see them in church. They'll start blaming God. They don't have an abundant life. Hmm? Can I help you with something? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But if all you're interested in is money, you're going to miss the mark. If all you're interested in is a, a, an individual, or your health, or material goods, you're going to miss the mark. So i got news for you. If he doesn't come, we're all going to get sick and die. You better have a source. That's bigger than your health. Mm. I'm glad there's a source. Those that have an abundant life, they realize who the source is. Jesus. Mm. There's some people, they only testify about money, what God's done for them. Boy, God met my bills. God did this for me. God sent this in to me. God sent this in. Well, I'm glad he did it, but can I help you something? I've read the book. Huh? He will supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. That's no problem for God. But you show me somebody that just gets all tore up and says, I just got to thinking about Him. And He got so big in my, in my heart, in my car, in my house, I just had to get out. I like it when they're all about Him. That will help you. Abundant life is one that recognizes the source. Hmm? 
Can I help you something? It was no problem for God to part the Red Sea. No problem for him to cool off the fiery furnace. It was no problem for him to shut the lion's mouths. It was no problem for him to feed, they estimate, 6 million Jews in the wilderness, and then they multiplied for 40 years, and they didn't wear out a pair of shoes, and they ate every day. Hmm. I, I, I don't remember the statistic. I read one time how much water it took for that crowd. How many hundreds of thousands of gallons of water every day, and if they didn't have a source, God open up a rock and make one. That's our God. And we walk around like he's a pauper. I don't know if God can meet my needs. You just need an abundant life. Hmm? Amen. And I'll say for 45 years, he's been taking care of me. Amen. Me and Miss Nick scratch our heads sometimes. We look back and think, how in the world? I know how. His name's God. Amen. Jesus is well able. Hmm? Yeah. Can I say one living abundantly not only recognizes the source, but one living abundantly is sensitive. Those who have the crack face salvation, I don't know where that came from, but that's going to stick. You wait till you see that commercial. Some of you are thinking, thinking about that. I don't know what chocolate is, you know. But when you see this woman at the end biting that thing, she's a mess, man. Lord have mercy, she's a mess. She makes us look, is she, isn't she a mess? Does that make you want to eat that chocolate? Makes me want to throw up. Uh, you'd eat chocolate, and you'd watch somebody throw up and eat chocolate while they're doing it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think you have. I've seen him eat on a golf course. It is not pretty. But the reason so, so many people that are saved are miserable, they're not sensitive. The Lord said, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah, and those of us that are saved, we have the Spirit of God living inside of us, but it is a difficult thing to teach, but it's something that's got to be experienced where we learn to listen to the Spirit of God. It's called discernment. Without discernment, you'll never have an abundant life. There are some people, Brother Ray, they just don't get it. The Spirit of God be moving all over the building. Folks just getting blessed. And other folks sitting there yawning and walk out and think, well, what's the big deal? Well, his name's Jesus. He don't have to meet with us. I'm glad he chooses to. And when he meets with us, I want to get in on it. So I need to know when he's doing it and when he's not doing it. Because I've been in services where people are doing it, and it's a mess. Hmm? It's called discernment. It's called being sensitive. It's called learning to exercise when it's the Spirit of God speaking with that still, small voice in your heart. And see, I can't explain to you how that is, only to say this, you just know when it's him. Uh, uh, let me just show you a verse real quick. Uh, 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 look with me down here in verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, they follow me. Amen. All I can tell you, if you're saved, and, and he gets to speak, and if you are in tune with him, if you've uh, uh, been in the book, and you've been walking with him, you're in tune with him, you'll know when he's speaking. Hmm? You'll just know. If you don't know when it's him speaking and when it's not him speaking, I'd say you need to get the book and get on your knees more. You spend more time with him, you'll know his voice. But you need to learn to be sensitive. You need to know when God is wanting you to move or sit still or to follow or to stand pat or to be used or not to be used. Can I say he opened the door but not every door that is open was opened by God. Do you know how many preachers I've had over the years tell me what the will of God was for my life only for them to not have a clue? Can I have you say, preachers not Holy Ghost Junior, although some of them think they are. Uh, the Holy Ghost knows how to speak to me. I don't need uh, some preacher to come speak to me. The Holy Ghost knows how to speak to me because I belong to him. Are you listening? Amen. But the difference is you've got to learn to discern his voice if you're going to have an abundant life.
Now, you just know I was just a, uh, in Florida, drove down, Matt followed me. He's still down there. He had to go to Atlanta on business, and uh, Lord willing, he'll be back on Wednesday. We went down there. He used to follow me. You know what a mess it was last Saturday night. Got all that snow and all that salt and everything. We left Sunday night right after church, uh, drove down to Tennessee, spent the night, went on down uh, uh, to Florida. We're on our way uh, Monday to Florida, and the sun was shining. It was Alabama. It was about 40 degrees. My truck was a mess. Black truck with salt all over it is a mess. Uh, I'm down to the south. They don't even know what salt on a vehicle looks like, all right? I'm down somewhere in Alabama. I'm driving, and I've already told Matt, you know, we're going to have to get my truck washed. I cannot show up in Florida in a suit and a tie in this nasty truck, okay? Well, we're driving. i got about half a tank of gas. Brother Tony's been on trips with me. Brother Tony, you need to pray for him. God increases his faith. It gets down a quarter tank. He's bugging me. Preacher, we need gas. We need gas. Got a quarter tank. Uh, and I got that little computer telling me I got 130 miles. And then I know from experience you got 30 miles past that. When it gets zero, you got another 30 miles. Huh? I just drive by faith sometimes. Are you listening? Uh, Tony's got a real faith problem. Quarter tank. Preacher, need gas. So when he's in my vehicle, I make sure it gets down about zero. Uh, I, one time he was out on visitation, he said, I want you to know, I'm not pushing this car. Hmm? <laughs> Remember that? That's when I had that Taurus, and now Brother Randy's a driving, huh? Uh, we might have been close to pushing that day, but I was proving a point. I said, you need more faith, Tony. You need more. Well, I was, I was half a tank. I've got a long way to go. huh? And I'm barreling down. I don't need gas. I'd already had my Pepsi. I didn't need a Pepsi. I already had a chocolate bar, didn't need a chocolate bar. Everything's good. I'm driving down the highway, clipping them off about 82 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, something says, you need to pull off. Now, I could have looked down and said, well, I don't need gas. I, don't, I had the Pepsi, and I don't need to relieve myself from the Pepsi. Some of you know what that's like. Everything's good. I'll just wait till I get on down the road. But see, what told me to pull off came from here. So I just hit the turn signal, eased up, took the exit, come down off the exit ramp, turn left. There's about six gas stations. I seen one had a car wash. I said, I'll pull in there. I pulled in there. Well, I did not know down south. First of all, they don't put antifreeze in the windshield wiper fluid, so those were all froze up from the night before. And they don't turn the car washes on when it gets below 40 degrees. So the car wash wasn't working. But anyway, I was listening to that song, It's Under the Blood. Amen. So I was having a time going down the road anyway. And so I pulled in, and, and Matt pulls in a the gas pump over next to me and I crank down the wind and I crank that song up he gets out he's going oh that's a blessing so I get out of the truck and walking down a hill next to the gas station comes right up to my truck is a young man I'd say in his, in his mid 20's he was tall kind of thin he says sir I need some help do you have anything that help me without hesitating it just hit me and I just said I got the gospel you want that he said, yes, sir. So he come around the side of my truck, and I reached in and grabbed that track that you like, Brother Bob, about 18 inches from your head to your heart. And that's how close it is to going to heaven or going to hell, about 18 inches. And so I, I reached in my pocket, I got him out a little bit of money, and I gave him that track. I said, here's some money. This money uh, uh, really won't help you. Uh, I said, what's in this paper right here will change your life. And I just gave it to him. Well, he walked in the gas station, and me being Mr. Spiritual, I thought he's going to go buy get beer or cigarettes or something with that money. Well, I'm pumping gas, and all of a sudden he comes walking out, and he's got, he's got something in his hand. It's, it's, it's about this, this long, and, and I, I'm thinking, oh, great, he bought lottery tickets, you know, because I'm super spiritual. He comes walking right back up to me, and I see he's still got that money in his hand, and he's reading that track. He says, sir, why do you think this will change my life? I said, because 45 years ago, Jesus changed my life. I said, if you save me, it'll save you. I started quoting some scripture. I don't even know where it came from. But I started quoting some scripture. 
I looked at him and said, Jesus, save you right here, right now. I said, you want to be saved? He said, yes, sir, I do. And I couldn't even tell him to call on the Lord. He started calling on the Lord. said, Lord Jesus, save me. Uh, I need a new life. Uh, will you change my life? Uh, oh, he got done praying. A big smile come over his face. Uh, I told him, I said, you need to get in a good church. Uh, you need to read the Word of God every day. He'll change your life. Uh, I said, what's your name? He said, my name's Christopher Harris. Uh, I shook his hand, told him who I was, uh, told him I'd be praying for him. Uh, uh, he didn't go back in the gas station. He walked across the street to Wendy's and got him a cheeseburger. Uh, hey, hallelujah. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Doug Foster in the flesh wouldn't have stopped. Uh, Doug Foster in the flesh wouldn't have went to that gas station. Uh, I've been living an abundant life. Uh, you learn to be sensitive. Uh, it was no accident. Uh, God wanted me that there that day. Uh, God wanted that boy to get the gospel. Uh, hey, if I wouldn't have been sensitive, uh, I'd have been cracked face going to Florida. Uh, hey, what would happen if a Jehovah Witness would have been there? Uh, or a Scientologist? Uh, that boy needed the truth. Uh, and God would change his life. Uh, abundant life comes with being sensitive. I wear not much and we get inundated with so much it's work keeping your frame of mind where you can discern God's voice but when you walk with him you've got an abundant life and there's nothing like knowing that God will take somebody like me or somebody like you to give the gospel to somebody else and change their life it'll cause you to have an abundant life can I say this one living abundantly can't get enough of the scriptures that's why Brother Mercer's hungry today. He hadn't had the scripture. He's been snowed in. Needs preaching. Hey, I'm glad you can watch it. There's, it's, it's better. It's not Memorex. You know, it is it live in Memorex? You've got to be there. It's just better when you're there. Well, the Bible says in Psalm 119 to 130, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. An abundant life is one, my dear friends, that has the book sown in their heart. Uh, can I say this? One living abundantly is substantive. Colossians chapter 3 says this in verse number 1. If ye, be risen with, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Amen. To have a substantial life or a life of substance, a life that is abundant is one that is seeking things above. When you seek Christ and you seek the things of Christ and you seek uh, 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 to set your affections on things far greater than this world, you'll have an abundant life. Amen. You've, I've used the illustration so many times. People's circumstances and their, their problems and their storms are right here. And I'm not diminishing your circumstances and your storms and your problems. You've got problems, you've got problems. Pain hurts. Sickness is not fun. Uh, feeling like your life is coming apart is not enjoyable. Mm, the difference with some people, some people, all oh, that's right here. They're saved, but it's all right here. Those that live abundantly have got to where they can do this and look up. All oh, this is still here. But the psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Amen. When you're seeking those things that are above, your problems may still be in your life, but your problems will not control you. And that's what gives you an abundant life. Amen. Oh, we have problems. There's been people actually tell my wife, oh, you guys live a perfect life. <laughs> Come hang out for a while. Uh, it's not perfect because I'm involved, all right? Uh, we have problems like everybody else. Uh, we face things like everybody else. Sid's got a torn meniscus in her knee, may have to have surgery as soon as the season's over. It's not fun. Oh, I can't go and hold her hand. She's a couple hours away. That's a hard thing to go through. Watching one of your children suffer. That's hard. We have problems. Everybody has problems, huh? I want to tell you something. When Jesus saved me, he told me he can not only save me, he can handle all my problems. Amen. Hmm. Huh? I've just learned as long as I look to him, it'll be all right. Yeah. right. Let me say this lastly. Those that have an abundant life lives a life that's submissive. You know the verses in Romans chapter number 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. And by the way, without his mercy, we can't do anything. Right. Amen. You couldn't even get up and tie your shoes without the mercy of God. Uh, 
we are what we are by the grace of God. Uh, without Him, we're just nothing but ultimate failures. But through Him, there's nothing we can't do. Hmm? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. There's, a, there's the choice again. You have to choose to do this. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. I've heard people all my life, boy, I'd die for Jesus. He don't want you to die for Him. He did the dying. He wants you to live for Him. Hmm? God can use you. You have some redeeming benefit to God. The world may think you're useless. And the world may think that you don't have much. It don't matter. God wants to use you. He don't need your abilities. He wants your availability. He just wants you to present yourself. I'll never forget years ago, we had the buckets out here and putting objects in. Uh, uh, Brother Josh uh, 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 just signed his name on a blank piece of paper and said, God, you fill it in. Whatever you want, I'm willing to do it. That's what God wants. Amen. Just your availability, huh? That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. See, God wants us to present ourselves, but do it His way. Sell out to the things of God. When you are, you're accepted of God, huh? which is your reasonable service. God's not a harsh taskmaster. He don't ask us to do things that we can't do. He just wants us to reasonably present ourselves. That's, that, God's, that's pretty reasonable. God paid for our sins and given us a wonderful place in eternity, and all he asks is that we just present ourselves to be used of him. Be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've heard me say it many times. The battle's in our mind. While you're saying here today, I want an abundant life, the devil's telling you, you can't have it. The devil's a liar. Remember the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy. You're not good enough. No, I'm not, but Jesus is. You're not smart enough. No, I'm not, but Jesus is. Uh, you're not uh, talented enough. No, I'm not, but Jesus is. Are you listening? Uh, uh, you got to renew your mind. It's not me. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Are you listening? And that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God greatest thing in your life is when you learn to say Jesus here I am if there's anything you see in my, my life that you can use use me hmm? uh, Ezekiel said I sought for a man to stand in a gap make up a hedge and I found none I wonder how many services God walks through and says I wonder who will present themselves today to stand in the gap and make up a hedge I wonder how many times after service he said but I found none listen those who are saved yet not living an abundant life live a different kind of life. They live a self-motivated life. And that is a miserable life. You don't even know which direction to turn at a stoplight most of the time in the stoplight of life. That's a miserable way to live. It's a whole lot better just following Jesus. He makes all the decisions. All you got to do is follow him. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Friend, as your pastor, it's my desire to see every one of you living an abundant life. You can. It's available. You just got to have an, the appetite to do it. You just got to say, Lord, that's what I want. Listen, Jesus is wonderful. He's great and greatly to be praised. But some of you look like he's not too wonderful in your life. He can be. If you're saved, hallelujah, you're saved. But there's a lot more to it than that. You can have a joyful saved life. You can have a peaceful saved life. You can have a meaningful saved life. But the choice is yours. Why would you choose to be miserable? And I'm going to say this, and I'll quit. Fear of loss is greater than fear of gain. That is a fundamental rule of law. You know, on the Internet, there's enough information where every one of us could be a millionaire. The reason not every one of us will ever be a millionaire is because we are worried that we'd have to lose something we have in order to gain those riches. Same thing happens in, in Christianity. You're comfortable where you are in your miserable life, and you're afraid that if you surrender to God for an abundant life, He might send you to Africa. Well, friend, if He does, it'll be all right. But chances are, He just might send you across the street. 
Either way, I'd rather be in the will of God and living an abundant life than living a miserable life. Life's too short to be miserable. In a saved life, there's no sense in being miserable. So whatever comfort zone you're in, it's not worth it if it's making you miserable. Huh? And by the way, there's no more comfort than you'll ever have than have comfort from the Holy Ghost that you're in the will of God. Hmm? You can have an abundant life, friend, but you've got to choose to have it. You've got to choose to have it. And that starts with saying, Lord, I want an abundant life. That Christopher Harris said he wanted to change life. And I believe God saved him. If you want an abundant life, you just got to ask for it. Hmm? Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You want an abundant life? You can have it. But you got to come and get it. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can have a saved life. Door's been opened. You have the opportunity. You just got to come. God saved that old boy in that gas station. God saved you right here today, but you got to want to be saved. You got to come to Him. Let's all stand. Some are coming. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. How's your life? Is it miserable? Don't have to be. You can have an abundant life. You can live in the joy of Jesus around here, even starting today. But the choice is yours. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you, Lord, for not only eternal life, but, Lord, we can have an abundant life. Lord, thank you for those that have lived an abundant life in front of me that have inspired me to have what they have. And find out in the Word of God it's available. Lord, I'm thankful that you choose to use an old wretch like me. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless this invitation. You'd speak to hearts. That no saved person leave out here living the same life they came in. But, Lord, they choose to move up closer and have a more abundant life than they've ever had before. God, I pray if there's anybody in our midst unsaved, that today you open their eyes to the fact there's an open door of salvation, and they can come and be saved. Lord, I pray they'd come. Let's take the Bible and show them how to be saved. Now, God, have your will and way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Bless, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>